White House says one of the key components of its new IT modernization plan is people. The nominee to become the deputy director for management at OMB, Margaret Weikert, says personnel and the workforce will be one of her priorities if she's confirmed. Several holdups to workforce development, though, are still around despite the administration's focus. Jack Mankoski is president and CEO of Graduate School USA. Jack, welcome. Thanks for coming Thank on the Francis. program. One tool agencies have at their disposal is trying to help create career tracks mm -hmm. for employees yes. so that they stay engaged and want to continue to work for the government. Are you seeing progress in agencies building career tracks? For in employees? fact, we are, and, and, and you know, agencies and Chico's understand that they have to do that in order to compete for, for talent and then retain uh, talent. Um, I think they're helping employees understand the career path a little better than they, than they have before, looking for job opportunities and understanding what's necessary for them to, to move through those career paths. Uh, the employers, the agencies themselves, are really helping those employees understand, well, how do I do that? They're creating job opportunities and, and maybe details within their organization so they can start experiencing a little more of the business of that agency across the board. Uh, more just recently heard some very interesting stories around DHS who, who is doing some some interesting things uh, at TSA they found that they have a very high turnover rate of course at the airports and they were concerned about where these people were going well when they looked at the data they were finding that they were taking other job enforcement positions in government many of them staying with DHS and other agencies and so the DHS has actually started to take a broad look at law enforcement what those paths might look like helping agents or the, or, you know, the organization uh, talk to people what their aspirations are and, and then move them through those those career paths and they have that that strikes me as a really smart idea and a way to build to, to use that job yeah. that may not be too terrifically appealing in and of itself that's right as a stepping stone to bring somebody in and help them develop a career yeah. that is not limited just to one agency gives them cross-governmental experience well, with, without question and you have those types of jobs you also have the hard to fill <coughs> and those very difficult ones those border agents who are down on, on, mm -hmm. on the line working very, very difficult jobs, uh, but who want to stay in law enforcement, but they're not going to stay in that job. So how do you move them forward? And you know, every agency is is challenged with those things. And I think DHS, in fact, is doing quite a, quite an excellent job in that regard. So kind of an yeah. outgrowth of that mm -hmm. idea of helping build career tracks for professionals mm -hmm. is developing leadership skills in someone and elevating them to leadership positions yes. when they may or may not necessarily want to go into leadership, mm -hmm. when they may prefer to stay in their positions as technical yes. experts. Are you seeing progress there, Jay? Uh, we are seeing progress. Uh, agencies are beginning to understand, and Air Force, for example, has been talking recently about the number one reason why people are leaving jobs there, and that's not unique to Air Force, is the supervisor. Mm. So, you know, if they're going to retain that talent and try to develop it and move it along, those supervisors really need to become mentors and coaches, and they need to broaden out those skills, and I think agencies are looking at the emotional intelligence elements of, of their supervisors and not just the technical side of things to, to facilitate that. One of the things when I talk to Chico's all yeah. the time that they talk about is the challenges that they have with the hiring process and mm -hmm. uh, the way that reform might look like in workforce <coughs> shaping and all those kinds of things. Conversely, private sector people, especially in, in industry that serves government, tell me their hardest challenge is just finding the talent yeah. to fill the jobs that they need to fill. What do you think it will take for that to kind of shift? Is it going to take kind of a massive workforce reform effort, as has been talked about in Congress? Or are there things that agencies can do among themselves or, or individually to be able to kind of chip away at some of these challenges and really focus on the people part of it? Well, that's a big, big issue, Francis. And clearly, government reform uh, around the personnel systems is very much needed. It has to, it has to happen. The GSA mo GS model uh, is no longer relevant uh, to many people who want to come into careers. And Looking to move around, and, and you know, not, not uh, are going to be tucked into into one of one of those. Uh, so agencies certainly are taking a greater look at at all of that. The uh, the challenge, of course, is they have a slow process in terms of hiring. Uh, the candidate pools are smaller then because of that. Um, and how do you get those folks to really kind of take a look and commit to government? Uh, there are opportunities for it, most certainly. But uh, What are the big opportunities yeah. that agencies have in as we look toward 2018 mm -hmm. to try to break out of some of these stereotypes that 
you know, in some cases, unfortunately, are justified the long hiring process. Yeah, you know, I've, what I've heard, kind of going back to the earlier point in, in recruitment uh, and, then, and then the retention element of it, I know one department has brought together when they do their recruitment fairs, they bring the whole department in rather than single agencies. Mm. And those departments then are talking to people coming in, and if they find that the aspirations are tied to the department but not that agency, you know, they'll walk them over to the table where someone else is, make the introduction, hand them off, and make them really feel like they, that they want to be there. Uh, so those are some of the things that they can do, I think, in, in, in terms of engaging the employee or the candidates, actually, in terms of what the organization is like. It, it, it offers a, a window into the culture of the organization. So important, particularly to the millennials coming mm -hmm. in. Yeah. We just have a couple of minutes, Jack, sure. but you struck on something that I think is important to note. We've talked a lot about recruitment in this mm -hmm. conversation, and we talk a lot about recruitment more broadly in the human capital community right. and government. Maybe we don't talk about retention as much as we should, especially in light of some of the numbers that we've just recently seen in the Federal right. Employee Viewpoint Survey That's and the right. best places to work numbers. Mm -hmm. They seem to be getting a little better, but they're not getting better really fast, are mm -hmm. they? No, they're not. And, and you know, the rankings aren't changing too much, right? So, so you have the same agencies at the top and, and, and those, they're, they're doing well. You know, I think agencies that are talking to their employees, you know, it's important to understand why they're leaving. You know, that, the, that data is important, but get out in front of it and, and start talking to your employees. What's it going to take to keep you, to keep you in the organization? Where do you want to go with it? How can we help you move in that direction um, and be proactive uh, to retain that talent there? One of the best strategies I think they can offer. We have about 30 seconds sure. left. What will you pay attention to the most in 2018 to see where agencies are going with these kinds of topics? Well, I think leadership development and how are they going to move people up through the ranks as the exodus continues, um, how that knowledge management element works so that those who are leaving government are able to pass the, what they have learned over time uh, to those folks and really building out those new leaders beyond, as we talked about before, the technical requirements to really fill out the, the broader uh, uh, skill sets that managers and leaders need. Jack, thanks very much for coming on. Francis, thank you. Very nice to have you.